Welcome to the show. Today we're going to talk about Project Guardian, which is a pilot test to use the blockchain and digital assets for bond trading. So it's a pretty cool uh, prototype for how the bond markets could move to a different system. All right, welcome to the show. I have a very unbeautiful background today. I'm in the process of moving offices, but the internet here is really good. So I thought I would record a video today to talk about Project Guardian and what this, the implications are for this for bond markets, potentially stock markets, all sort of markets where assets are traded. So this test, this pilot project, I'm not really sure what the best label is for it, we'll just call it a project, was run in Singapore through the Singapore Central Bank. And it involved quite a few parties, uh, JP Morgan, DBS Bank, Market Node. And I'll be honest, I don't know a whole lot about Singapore banking at all, but these were the groups that were involved. And I'm more interested, to be honest, in the implications of what this means for the industry than necessarily this specific project. But this kind of opened my eyes to what the possibilities are and the potential are for using DeFi for institutional trading. And I'm not an institutional trader, uh, but when I first learned about DeFi, it was kind of presented as like this anti-establishment concept and a way for people to trade and bank outside of the system. And uh, you know, I'll admit that was kind of appealing, but I, it did raise this, raise this question of, you know, will this stuff ever take on if the serious big money like doesn't want to play? And there was always chatter, at least that I heard about when I first learned about this stuff, that the retail products the exchanges we were using, kind of a pancake swap, Uniswap type thing. These were really prototypes to just test out the software and let the retail users kind of figure out the bugs and how to make it better and that kind of thing. And I didn't know if that was necessarily true or not, but this test, Project Guardian, kind of confirmed that yes, now that some of the bugs have been worked out with DeFi and this pilot test confirmed that you can trade bonds, it could potentially be a massive game changer for the bond market. So let me just explain a little bit about what I know regarding how this test works. So when you buy a bond, you would, in this case, you would get basically either an NFT or some kind of digital asset to confirm you own it. Um, I don't know if it necessarily matters. The point is, is that you now have some kind of asset on the blockchain that you own. And DeFi has a very cool feature that is different than a lot of other online services and that it uses a smart contract which has a series of if then statements. You know, so in the case of trading a bond, you know, if you wanted to sell your bond, it's kind of like programming in um, stop losses in an exchange if you've ever done that, where you can say, you know, if the price of this goes to X, sell sell this number of them. Well, what if you kind of program that into the bond market where it was like, all right, well, if the bond market yield or interest rate or whatever criteria you'd normally sell a bond at, if it gets to this condition, then I'm willing to sell it. And somebody on the other side of the transaction could say, all right, well, if this bond gets to X condition, I'm willing to buy it. And you could also be required via the smart contract to only be able to sort of enter that transaction if you had the funds in a wallet. So this way the exchange between two parties could go through without any counterparty risk. That's one of the problems with the markets as they're done now is I could raise my hand and say I want to buy something and you put that thing aside for me, but it takes a couple of days for like the settlement of the money to go through. Well, what if like it just doesn't work out? Like I didn't have the money or some other problem happened that made the transaction ultimately fail. 
Well, you can avoid that by using a smart contract to make sure that both party, or I guess the party who's paying has the money so that the transaction doesn't actually go through on the blockchain until it's confirmed. Now, with something like PancakeSwap or Uniswap, like anybody could come in who has a wallet and trade. That's sort of one of the beautiful things about those DeFi protocols is they don't uh, require you to KYC or to, um, you know, have an account with them. Like you, anybody can do it. Well, the bond market, the institutional bond market, doesn't necessarily want to be open to everyone. So how could you create a bond market that is not open to everybody? You can set up a permissioned liquidity pool where you have to have permission to access it. How could that work? Well, we learned a lot about NFTs last year. And, you know, if you own a particular NFT, you could be given access to a Discord group. Well, what if you were only given access to this liquidity pool if you had an NFT? essentially functioned like your access card, your membership card. This way, you could have people globally accessing a online decentralized exchange that is permissioned, meaning only certain people are allowed to do it. So you have to be, maybe you have to be an institutional investor or work at a certain bank, like I don't know, whatever criteria they decide they want to do. And that way these transactions could go through. You use a particular wallet you have to have the funds in there so that there isn't this failed transaction counterparty risk problem. This would save these bond traders a ton of paperwork regarding what they call like the back office, which is when you have sort of admin finance type people who have to kind of track down the payment and the settlement. And in my video for Project Ion, we kind of talked about that being a big pain point for a lot of these big investment businesses is the cost and labor and hassle of having to sort of take care of the logistics of settling these transactions. Well, DeFi would be a great way for these markets to trade and you can use NFTs and, you know, to make it so that only people who meet a certain criteria are allowed to do it. This would be a way for the big money institutional investors to move on to the blockchain for trading. And, you know, we've been hearing for a long time that all every asset will be tokenized. Well, like, how would that really work? Well, Project Guardian is a neat way to understand how it could work for the bond market. Uh, bond market's essentially just loans you give to a government or in some cases a corporation there's also a big corporate bond market um, but the and it's it's huge the bond market is absolutely massive and to move that kind of money over to the blockchain would free up a ton of resources that are currently handling like the admin paperwork type thing um, so this is kind of a neat idea and recently uh, there was a guy who did a YouTube video about his friend Bob, who was uh, in the bond market with uh, he's a liquidity maker, a, a market maker, and he kind of matches up buyers and sellers, is my understanding of that. But the key thing that came up in that video was that Ripple was meeting with the Treasury, the U.S. Treasury, to talk about something we didn't really know. And at the same time in the news, the Treasury Janet Yellen is talking about how the bond market has these liquidity problems. And so it kind of reminded me of Project Guardian and how it would fit that the U.S. bond market maybe has a tough time, maybe there's a problem if the bond market collapse, which would actually affect a lot of people very negatively. This could be the right time to switch over to a tokenized blockchain-based bond market and use a digital asset like an XRP, an XDC, XLM. My understanding is all of those could functionally fill that role. Uh, and then the transactions could be settled using these digital assets. You wouldn't need this back office to do this. Um, but you also, you know, the big bond markets don't want to be open to the public. They don't want to be hacked. They don't want to, you know, I don't really know the criteria, to be honest, about how you get to participate in the institutional bond market, but I'm pretty confident that there is some criteria. And regardless of what that is, an NFT type asset could let 
only the right people kind of participate in it. And this would open up the blockchain to be absolutely massive, which is why when you hear people talk about a market cap of certain tokens and how you know XRP could never have a high value because the market cap would just be too high. Well, it's because your people who believe that are only thinking about the current participants in the market. Whereas if the entire sovereign bond market like moved to the blockchain, just think about how much bigger the size of them. I mean, it would be hundreds of trillions of dollars. Um, it's even speculated that the entire sort of market of bonds, shadow banking, offshore dollars, what's called the euro dollar market and the other financial markets. I mean, we're talking in the quadrillions of dollars, which is difficult to even imagine or think about. So Project Guardian was a neat test to uh, see how bond markets could be traded. Bonds could be traded using DeFi in a permissioned liquidity pool, uh, which would allow 24-7 trading via a specific group, which would be institutional investors in this case, and the settlement for these transactions would be in instant with no counterparty risk. So this, I think, is a really cool uh, way to see how the blockchain can solve an expensive and painful problem, which is key for offers that actually gain traction. Well, if you would like to talk to me more and join my community of people interested in talking about blockchain and geopolitics and the future of money, I'd love to have you in my locals community. Uh, the link for that is in the description. All right, we will see you in the next video.